Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in physical science. In this lesson, we're going to carry on with going through um, motion in one dimension. And we have been doing equations of motion, and now we're going to carry on with a couple of examples, exam examples of equations of motion. We're going to do one, two, and then we're moving on to graphs of motion. We'll explain them. And then we're going to do lots of examples on them as well. Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's carry on. It says, a van is traveling at a constant speed, okay, constant speed of 54 kilometers per hour in a 40 kilometer hour zone. So he's actually speeding. He is, ex he's speed he is over the speed limit, okay, by 14 kilometers an hour. It says a policeman starts his car from rest just as the van passes him. The police car accelerates at two meters per second squared until he reaches a maximum velocity of 20 meters per second and then the policeman continues to drive at a constant velocity at this constant velocity of 20. First it says define the term acceleration. Okay so obviously acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. The rate of change of velocity Okay, that's the one thing. It says convert 54 kilometers per hour to meters per second. Okay, so we did talk about how you could go about doing this. You have to convert when you're converting 54 kilometers per hour to meters per second. You have to multiply 1000 in the top because to get from kilometers to meters we need to multiply by a thousand and to get to the bottom you have to multiply by 60 to get to minutes and then by another 60 to get to seconds so it's the same as saying 54 multiplied by a thousand divided by 3600 so let us get out our calculator and do that so we're going to go 54 multiplied by one, two, three equals divided by 3,600 equals 15. So that is equal to 15 meters per second. Okay, that's 15 meters per second. Now it says calculate the time it takes for the police car to reach its maximum velocity. Okay, so now we're looking at equations of motion, right? We have, remember what I always say to you? I say to you always write down all the variables that you could possibly need, delta T, delta X. Okay, so what do they tell us? They tell us that he starts from rest, so his initial velocity is zero. His maximum velocity is 20. His acceleration is 2. And the question they're asking you is calculate the time. Right, so VF, VI, A, delta T. Right, so now if you look at that, we can see that we need to write down our equations of motion, right? So we've got VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A delta x. Delta x is equal to Vi delta t plus a half A delta t squared. And delta x is equal to Vf plus Vi over 2 delta t. Right, so Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T would work. We've got Vf, we've got Vi, we've got A, and we want delta T. So that equation there, the very first equation, is going to be the one we want. So therefore, we can say Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. Now, grade tens, I know it's very tempting to not write down your equation of motion, especially if you've got a fairly simple example where you're just substituting the numbers and solving for the one variable. It might seem a little bit like overkill to have to write down the equation, but I really want you to learn to write down the equation for the simple reason that um, especially as you go through to the higher grades, 
there is a mark allocated for choosing the correct equation. So if you don't show the correct equation, then you don't get that mark. That's the one thing. The second thing is, if you don't show, let's say for example, let's say you don't write this down, okay? But you just write naught is equal to 20 plus uh, 2t. Okay, now immediately because, and then, and then you think, well, this is really easy. T is going to be equal to 10, okay? But now the problem is, firstly, you've met, Firstly, you've messed up because these are supposed to be the other way around. Secondly, you've made a mathematical error because when that goes across, it's minus 20, therefore you'd have a negative time. So the point is that if you don't have this, there's no way for the teacher can give you any method marks, okay? Whereas if you, for example, I wonder if I can, let's see, yeah. If you leave it like this, Okay, there will be a mark allocated for writing down the correct equation and a mark for substitution. So, okay, yes, you messed up here with your substitution, but you would have got a mark for correctly substituting in there. And then, even though you messed up here, because of the fact that you're showing you're working, there's a carryover mark. There is a method mark that says, yes, we know they've messed up if you'd written minus 10, but this sum is right. Okay, even though you're getting in a negative time. Okay, do you understand what I'm saying? So you really, really need to write down your equations of motion because the whole point about science, what they're trying to mark is your method and not necessarily just the answer. I know in real life, um, in real life, you get marked on whether or not you're right or wrong and whether or not you know what you're doing. But in high school in science, they're trying to test whether or not you're thinking right. So even if you make a silly mistake with the maths, they're trying to test whether or not you actually understand the concept, which is why you need to write down the equation you chose and also why you get marks for substituting in and for method marks, if, even if you've made a silly mistake. Right, so the final velocity is 20. Okay, I have decided that everything in the one direction is positive, okay? So we don't have to worry about it because everybody's traveling in the same direction. So therefore it's 20 is equal to zero plus two delta t. So do you agree that delta t is equal to 10 seconds? Now there's another thing I want to say to you. If you get a negative number for time, you've done something wrong, okay? Seriously guys, you should know this. If you're getting a negative value for time, you have done something wrong. How can we possibly get a negative value for time? As far as we're concerned, we can't time travel. I don't care what cool TV shows and movies they are. So, Therefore, we cannot get a negative time. So time is a scalar and it should always be positive. Secondly, your unit for time is S, okay, for seconds. I don't want to see this. This is not a unit for time, okay? You need to write S. If you're not sure, write out the whole word, seconds, okay? But do not, in any circumstances, write down that. You will get zero. Right. So basically it takes 10 seconds for the police car to reach its maximum velocity. Now it says calculate which vehicle the van or police car is ahead at the time calculated in question 3.3. So do you agree that what's happened is, okay, this is what's happened. We had a road. Now I know I really am not great at driving, I mean drawing, but let's say, okay. There is a van that is going past at going along, okay? And this van is going along and it's going along at, what did we say it was? 15 meters per second, okay? But it's carrying on at 15 meters per second at a constant velocity. So when it gets here, it's still traveling at 15 meters per second, right? I know it's changed, don't worry about it. Whereas the motorcyclist, I mean the police car, the police car is over here, he's a car. Okay, now when he sees the van go past us, he starts, his initial velocity is zero, he's speeding up to a velocity 
uh, what is it? 20 meters per second, 20 meters per second, right? And he's trying to catch up to this dude who was already going at 15 meters per second, right? At that same point. So what we're wanting to know now is who was ahead, who was ahead at that point? Was the van still ahead of the police car? was the police car, did the police car overtake the van? Okay, that's what we want to know. So it says, calculate which vehicle is ahead at the time. So for 10 seconds, the black one, for this dude, they're both traveling for 10 seconds. The van is traveling 15 meters per second for 10 seconds, which means he's traveled 150 meters. Agreed? The police car is a little bit more complicated. He's got an initial velocity of zero, a final velocity of 20. His acceleration is two and we want his displacement. So do you agree we could use delta x? Okay, so we could say delta x is equal to the final velocity of 20 plus the initial velocity of zero over two times by the time it took, which was 10. So that there is going to give us 100 meters. So that means that after this 10 seconds, I'm going to raise something. After these 10 seconds, the cop car, police car, is only over here. Okay, the, the other one has traveled 150 meters and the police car is behind him. Okay, do you understand that? So now he is he has traveled during those 10 seconds, he's traveled 100 meters and he has traveled 150. So the difference between these two is 50 meters. Okay, I know they look like they're overlapping, but just work with me. Now it says calculate how far the police car has to travel before it catches up with the van. Okay. So, do you agree that when they catch up, their displacement has to be the same? Okay, their displacement has to be the same. It says, calculate how far the police car has to travel before it catches up with the van. So, we can get two equations. Okay, so I need to erase some stuff here. Let's erase some stuff. So do you agree that the police car is doing two types of motion? He speeds up for the first bit, and during that time, he has traveled 100 meters, right? Then, then he's traveling another, okay. So now, do you, let's just do this in red. Do you agree this dude is carrying on, and he's carrying on at 15 meters per second? This dude is now traveling at 20 meters per second, but he's 50 meters behind him. Okay, so do you agree that the blue car's displacement, the blue car, okay, let's do it another way. Hang on a minute. The displacement of the police car has to equal the displacement of the van, right? But at the moment, at the moment, the displacement of the van is 50 meters ahead of the displacement of the blue car. Do you agree? So he is already ahead by 50 meters, right? So therefore, do you agree that his displacement, we have to add 50 meters onto this dude to get to that point? Okay, but now, we also know that velocity is delta x over delta t, but therefore delta x is going to be v delta t, right? Are you with me? So this dude, the police guy, he is traveling at 20 meters per second, 20 meters per second, t plus 50, and that has got to equal, and that's got to equal um, this one's yeah, which is 15t. Okay, do you agree? So what we're doing at the moment is we're working out how long it's going to take for, 
we're going to work out t we're going to work out how long it's going to take for these two cars to overtake each other so we have got five this is going to work 15 t minus 5 t 15 t is going to give me yeah that's not going to work i've got my thing here in a minute okay let me do it another way for you to understand it a bit better um okay so from here to here which is for 10 seconds t equals 10 seconds um the police car has traveled a hundred meters but during this time they've sped up now the initial velocity of the police car is 20. now during the same 10 seconds the van has traveled at t equals 10. The van has traveled 150 meters. So the van is already 50 meters ahead of the guy. Okay, right, ahead of him. Now, in order for them to catch up, in order for them to catch up, the police car's displacement the police car's displacement has to equal um, the van's displacement minus 50. Do you understand? Because he's already traveled 50 meters ahead of him. Okay, so in other words, that is the bit that he needs to travel now, is only that bit there. Whereas the policeman has to travel another 50 meters. Do you understand that? Now, he is traveling at 15 meters per second. Okay, right. Um, he is traveling at 15 meters. No, the police car is traveling at 20. Sorry, the police car is traveling at 20. He is traveling at 20 meters per second for a certain amount of time. And he is traveling at 15 meters meters per second for a certain amount of time minus the 50. No, it's actually plus. That's what the problem is. It's a plus. Because what we're saying is he's going to travel that bit plus the 50. That total distance, yes. Okay, that's plus. Okay, so therefore we've got 5t is equal to 50. So t is equal to 10 seconds. They have to travel another 10 seconds yeah, they have to travel another 10 seconds before they catch up, but they want to know how far the police car has to travel. Okay, well, we know he's already traveled 100 meters, right? So now what he's going to have to travel is going to be um, 10 seconds times by 20 meters per second, which is 200 meters. Therefore, his total displacement is going to be 100 plus the new 200, which is 300 meters. And now it says right down the total time by the police car to catch the van, it will be 20 seconds. It's the first 10 seconds to speed up, and then the next 10 seconds to catch him up. So it took him 20 seconds, which isn't a lot of time. Just let me check if there's anything. I can done that. Now it says the delivery van is traveling at a constant speed of 15 meters per second in a 60 kilometer per hour speed zone when the driver sees people walking across the pedestrian crossing 50 meters ahead of him okay the driver takes exactly one second to react so during that reaction time he is traveling at 15 meters per second during that reaction time right um, before he applies the brakes as hard as he can, it takes a further three seconds for the van to come to a stop. We're just not sure where he comes to a stop. It says, right, the equations of motion are only valid for motion of constant acceleration in a straight line. Okay, constant acceleration of a straight line. Did the driver of the delivery van exceed the speed limit? Show all your calculations. Okay, he is traveling 15 meters per second in a 60 kilometer zone. So what do we need to do? We need to work out 
what 60 kilometers per hour is in meters per second to work out if he's speeding or not. So 60, we have to multiply by 1000 and divide by 3600, which equals what? So it's 60. Really? What is going on here? Multiply by 1000 equals divided by 3600 equals 50 over 3 which is 16.67 16 comma 67 meters per second so 60 kilometers per hour is equal to 16.67 meters per second and he was traveling 15 so the answer is no he was not speeding it says calculate the distance to the driver a delivery van travels during the first reaction second okay during the first second do you agree that he is not actually slowing down he is continuing to travel at 15 meters per second during his reaction time okay that means that he is going to be traveling 15 meters per second for one second which means he's traveled 15 meters right now it says, will the van stop before the pedestrian crossing? Surely work. Okay, so he has already stopped, I mean, used up 15 meters, okay? Which means that this distance here is 35 meters. But now we can't assume that he will stop in 35 meters. We've got to find out if he will. So we know his initial velocity is 15. We know his final velocity is zero. We know that the time they took T is three seconds. And we want to know delta X. That's what we want. So if we look at our equations of motion, we've got VF is equal to VI plus A delta T. VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2A delta X. Um, delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared and delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t so i think we will use this last one okay so it's going delta x is equal to vf which is 0 plus 15 over 2 times by 3 so therefore we've got 15 divided by 2 times 3 is going to be 45 over 2 which is 22 comma 5 meters so his total distance would be the 15 meters plus 22 comma 5 which is going to be comma 5 that's a 7 um, 2 and 1 is a 3. So his total distance is 37.5 kilometers, I mean meters, meters. And luckily he has a total of 50 meters. So does he stop before the pedestrian crossing? Yes, he does. And please guys, please remember that you can't just do your calculation and not actually explain your answers. And you can't just do the calculation and then for yourself go, well, it's pretty obvious that he therefore stopped in time. You need to answer the question if they ask, Will he stop in time? The answer is yes or no. And then obviously you show you're working. Now it says, will the stopping distance of the van increase or decrease when the road is wet and slippery? And it says, referring to both the velocity and time, briefly explain how you arrived at your answer. Okay, so the answer obviously is that the stopping distance is going to increase, right? Obviously, the reason behind that is the fact that if, um, obviously, the, the reason for this, of course, is that if you look at the change in velocity, the, the velocity change is going to take longer, there's going to be a longer it's going to take longer to change the velocity, okay, because of the fact that there's more less friction. Right, now let's talk about graphs of motion. Okay, now these are supposed to be revision lessons. So you guys all should know about your graphs 
of motion. Okay, you should be able to answer all questions on graphs of motion already, but we are going to revise it all to make sure you do understand it. So that you should know that there are two types of graphs of constant motion. One is the constant velocity. In other words, there's no acceleration whatsoever. Okay, the thing travels at a specific velocity at all the time. There's also no change in direction because velocity is a vector. So constant velocity means basically there is no change in direction, no change in direction and no change in the velocity in the magnitude of the velocity. So now if you look at that and the best way to look at these graphs is actually to start with well, this one is to start the velocity. You can see that yeah we've drawn a constant velocity graph where the person has got a basic zero, I mean a velocity of one the whole way through. So it's just going along uh, one meter per second, right? Now, obviously his acceleration is going to be zero, okay? Because of the fact that his, um, his velocity is constant, okay? But if you look at this, we know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. If you don't believe me, remember the equation Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. That actually can be rearranged to Vf minus Vi over delta T is equal to A. In fact, this was the equation that was rearranged to form that. So we therefore know that the gradient of this has to give us the acceleration. So the gradient of this graph always gives you the value of that. So so you can see that the gradient of this is zero because there is no change in the x, I mean in the y values, okay? Therefore your acceleration is zero in this case. Yeah, position versus time graph. Well, if you think about it, velocity is delta x over delta t, right? So the gradient of this is going to give me my velocity. So again, the gradient of this is going to give me my velocity. Okay, now last thing, well not last thing, but one thing, another thing that you should think about is the fact that um, the area under of this graph, okay, would be the area is the same as velocity multiplied by time. But velocity is meters per second, which is time, times by time which is obviously just meters. So the area under this graph is giving me the displacement at a point. Okay, let's try again. The area under the velocity versus time graph, okay, gives them the displacement, the displacement. And obviously, since there's a zero here, there is no acceleration, I mean, makes sense, right? Okay, moving on. Exactly the same rules apply here. The only difference is that because we've got a constant acceleration, notice the difference. Yeah, we had a constant velocity and a zero, a zero acceleration, and this is a straight line. So they've moved over. Now, this is the constant acceleration. This here is the velocity versus time graph. And this is the position versus time graph, which you don't have to worry about too much because obviously they don't expect you to be able to draw parabolas in the exams and you don't have to worry about finding gradients of parabolas unless you are looking at a specific point. Right, so the summary of the of graphs. Okay, obviously if this is a stationary object, there is no displacement or change in displacement. So therefore the displacement remains constant the whole way through. If, if there's a uniform motion, there will be a straight line going up to the right. And if there is an acceleration, then obviously this graph is going to get curved up because of, of the, sorry. Okay, motion of the constant acceleration, it's going to curve up because obviously it's speeding up and up and up and up, okay? Whereas if you're looking at stationary object, the velocity is zero. Uniform velocity, velocity is constant, whereas if you've got a constant acceleration, the velocity is increasing. Acceleration of stationary object is zero, stationary uniform object is zero, and motion of a constant acceleration is obviously straight across. So please remember that the gradient of this 
gives you that, the gradient, okay? And the area under this gives you this. The area under this gives you this, okay? Right, so let's do a couple of examples, shall we? I think the best way to really understand this is actually to do a couple of examples. So, it says, a man runs from point A in a straight line along a track A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So this is the graph that represents um, the straight track, okay? Sorry. Right, now, use information on the graph and describe the motion of the man from A to B and from B to D. Okay, now the very first thing you need to do, guys, is look at your y-axis and decide what type of graph you're looking at. Are you looking at a velocity versus time graph? Are you looking at a position versus time graph? Are you looking at an acceleration versus time graph? It is very important. The number of students um, that I have who do the whole question looking at it and not realizing that they should have read the y-axis and therefore they made a mistake and get the whole question wrong when they actually know what's going on, sort of, sort of, admittedly, um, but then they're getting it wrong for the simple reason that they're not looking at this y value. So it says you have velocity. So this is a velocity versus time graph. So all of this is going to be a constant velocity. Do you agree? Yeah, his velocity changes from naught to 2.5. And yeah, his velocity changes from 2.5 back down to naught. So yeah, from A to B, there is obviously a constant acceleration a constant acceleration and let's just work that out because we can acceleration is delta v over delta t which is the same as vf minus vi over delta t right so do you agree that the change in velocity would be 2 comma 5 minus 0 over the change in time would be 25 minus zero. So that's going to be 2 comma 5 over 25, which equals 0 comma 1 seconds. I mean, meters, sorry, not comma 1, meters per second squared. 0 0.1 meters per second squared. Okay, done that. From B to D, there is no change in the velocity, okay? So therefore, he is traveling at a constant velocity of 2.5 meters per second. Right, now it says calculate the acceleration between the man, of the man between E and G. So now they want the acceleration between E and G. Now again, we're looking at this equation. A is equal to VF minus VI over delta T. But now let's have a look at this. Do you agree that the final velocity in this case is going to be zero? The initial velocity in this case is going to be 2 comma 5. The delta T is going to be 40 seconds. And we want to work out the acceleration. So acceleration is change in velocity over change in time, or Vf minus Vi over delta t. So if we get that, we can say the final velocity is 0 minus 2 comma 5 over delta t, which is going to be from e to g. So that is 40 seconds. So that is equal to, let's go find out, it is 2.5, oh no, let's clear that, 2.5, no, let's try again last time, 2.5 divided by 40 equals 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, seconds. Um, no, and it's a negative meters per second squared. So the acceleration is minus 0, 0,25 meters. Oh, I did it again. Oh, sorry guys. I don't know what's going on here. 
minus 0, 0, 0.63 meters per second squared. All right, meters per second squared. Now it says, distance covered by the man in 100 seconds. They want to know the distance of this. Now, there are lots of ways that you could work it out, but what did we say? We said that the area under velocity versus tr um, time graph gives you the distance. Okay, so let's do that. So the area of this would be a half times by the base, which is 25, times by the height, which is 2,5, 2,5, plus this bit here, which we can call a rectangle, which is 2,5 multiplied by 60 minus 25 is 35, plus bracket a half times by 40 times by 2,5. Okay, excellent. So now all we need to do is get out our calculator. So we've got 25 multiplied by 2.5 equals times 0.5 equals, and that doesn't help at all. It's 31.25, 31,25 plus, oh, what happened? Okay, plus 2.5 times 35 equals 87.5, 87,5 plus 20 times 2,5 because I just hold it at half that, 20 times 2.5 equals, well, it's just 50 idiot. So that becomes, let's work it out, we've got a 5, a 7, a 7 and a 1 is 8, that is 8 and 8 is 16. So it's 168 comma 7, 5 meters, 168 comma 7, 5 meters. Right, grade 10s, we will start to this question tomorrow and we'll do a whole bunch of equate graphs of motion questions and one or two reaction time questions and then we'll move on to next section. Have a great day. Cheers.